Okay. So, hi, Ursula. Uh, hi, thank you. Hi, thank you so much for joining us all the way from the United States. This for you, it's evening. For us, it's daytime over here. And uh, for those of you who are watching, our followers, I'd like to introduce you to Ursula Rebecca. She's a recent graduate from STT, uh, uh, STT Sunshine Teachers Training, uh, the online Montessori diploma course. And she is a true inspiration because she's not had an easy journey completing this Montessori diploma. And that's why we've invited her here to have this conversation because we want her story to inspire all of you to persevere and get out there and complete your diploma. So Ursula, why don't you say hi to our uh, followers, our viewers, and tell them a little bit about yourself and where you are and what you're doing right now. Okay. Hello, parents, educators, and um, everyone, wherever you are. It is an honor for me to be sharing my Montessori journey with all of you. My name is Ursula, and I have one son. He is now six years old, first grade. And currently, we are living in Pennsylvania, the United States of America. And now, I work as a teacher. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you tell us what age group you're working with? Four to five, okay. four to five years old, yes. Okay, great. And so you were not always in Pennsylvania. You, When you signed up with us, you were in Jakarta at that time. Yes. And then you moved out of Jakarta to? Palu. Palu, okay. And you were there at a bit of a challenging time. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. Well, um, actually, my hometown is in Manado, North Sulawesi, and then that's where I started my career as an employee in one of state-owned companies in Indonesia. Nevertheless, once I moved to Jakarta in 2012 to work at the head office and got married, I've been living a nomadic life. Mm -hmm. um, and in the beginning of 2014, when my son was still baby, we had to move to Michigan, the United States of America, um, we had to live there for more than two years. That was the first time for me and my son to be introduced to Montessori. And then my son also started to attend Montessori class there. So in 2017, right, my husband was promoted to a higher position, but he had to move from head office in Jakarta to the regional office in Palu. A year later, in 2018, when I was doing um, Diploma Montessori in STT, my son and I moved to Palu, from Jakarta to Palu. And to be honest, I was expecting a perfect life. I just quit from my job, from the company, and got a chance to follow my passion, which is, you know, teaching children. I was studying Montessori at Sunshine Teachers Training. I was expecting smooth life, perfect life. But unfortunately, not even a month after our move, that severe natural disaster happened. It was the worst and might be the first one in Indonesia because it wasn't only the earthquake, but also um, so after the 7.5 magnitude earthquake, it was followed by tsunami and liquefaction. So three disasters almost at the same time. Um, liquefaction was was new for me. So basically, it's the solid soil, solid ground, become liquid. So right after, oh, I mean, right after, uh, right before the earthquake happened, my husband and I were, you know, we were unpacking, sorting, and arranging the Montessori materials because the container that shipped our car and our stuff from Jakarta just arrived in Palu a couple days ago, a couple days before. And then at that time, Sebastian was being clingy. Mm -hmm. He was hugging me from behind. I don't know, but apparently it, it was one of the signs. And then... um. I felt uncomfortable because I was working. We were arranging Montessori space at our house. So I asked him to let go of me so I can work. And before he did it, he was about to sit next to me. And all of a sudden, the earthquake happened just, you know, just like that. Mm -hmm. All the objects fell. I couldn't stand. 
I saw everything was just spinning around. I felt the shaking. It was getting stronger and stronger. It was the longest, longest earthquake in my life. Mm -hmm. And all I could hear was just sound like thunder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very loud. I felt like I was strong as a mother. Mm -hmm. I was... I was protecting my son, so I let him down, and I was covering his body with with my body, and I I said that to God. Mm -hmm. um, I just want him to to keep my son safe. So if the roof was going to, you know, to fall fall onto me, I just want to protect my son because mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. We keep bumping into each other, uh, but suddenly the the earthquake stopped, mm -hmm. and then I grabbed my son and got out. The house. So another thing shocking with me when I reached the front door, I saw our front yard was turning into gray mud. Mm -hmm. It was a liquefaction, but I didn't know that. It was new to me. Um, and there were some spots on the street in front of our house, and then on our front yard, there were some spots on the ground where the mud started to uh, spurt upwards like like a fountain of water yeah and the ground was hot I, yeah oh my goodness it was so so scary yeah. so it was liquefaction then after the main earthquake it was the main, the main earthquake large aftershocks happened at least every five minutes right, and still with the with the sound like a thunder so we we are we were so scared and we were not allowed to to be in our house. Mm -hmm. So we stayed on the street mm -hmm. without tent. So right. only um like you know we put um we put like um blanket mm -hmm. or rug on the street and then yeah with our neighbors we we stayed on the street for a couple of days. Sure. Thank you for sharing <sighs> that I know it's not easy to Talk about Not, it because it's like you're living through it again. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry you had to go. Through. Oh, no, no, I'm good. <laughs> but um, you never lost your resilience and you continued to give back to your community, isn't it? Yes, I did. Can you share with us about what you did once you were able to get a little bit back on your feet again? So I decided I want to do something for the community. Right. And then, fortunately, a lot of mothers in Indonesia, they supported me. Um, so I told them about my plan. I want to, like, yeah, I had a calling to run ch children's disaster relief project. Right. And this program focused on educational assistance through Montessori-inspired activities, mm -hmm. which already served more than a thousand children who mm -hmm. lived in emergency shelters mm -hmm. so um the first time i did it i was so shocked because they were living in a very emergency shelter yeah um with poor facilities so can you imagine in a in the um, in the area with more than 100 people with only one bathroom oh gosh can you imagine the children Whenever I went to the to the shelter, different shelter every weekend, Saturday and Monday, right? Uh, we visit them even in the remote area. You know, they they didn't take a bath; they had lice. Oh gosh! And then they smell like pee For sure. or poop sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. But they really need affection, and love, and attention from other people. What I did is first, I did activities that can cheer them up, and then we brought donations for them. Mm -hmm. We brought books, toys, everything that, yeah. Um, but after several months, I decided to focus on one area mm -hmm. and then, you know, keep teaching them, helping them. Be so you used Montessori uh, yes. activities to help them to read and write and. Things like right that. and then yeah for younger for younger children i provided hands on activities mm -hmm. 
And fortunately, some of my friends, they donated Montessori materials. Wow. They sent it to Palu. They kept sending me books, toys, um, art and craft supplies. That's amazing. Yeah. And oh, you, that's amazing. Were you able to salvage any of your own materials to use? Yes, yes. Okay, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So, so they work with pink towers. Okay. Pink towers. The um, um, you know, the dressing frames. Right, right. And the yeah. children enjoyed this. Oh yeah, and then I did the um, I did the activities that you you were teaching us about music and movement. Right. And they and they started to to speak in English. Like, do you remember the um, Listen and Move song from Greg and Steve? Yes, yes, yes. No, we did it. We did it. So yeah, they know. They know it. That's brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My so my car, my my car was red, a red car. So whenever they saw my red car mm -hmm. came, they were like, the red car, the red car, mm -hmm. and then the children, you know, they ran to to our our um our um, meeting area it's about one year working with these children almost one year yeah almost then, one year i never stopped yeah and then you had to move again is it yes so um the good news was my husband got scholarship right maybe you know it helped us to escape right you know i remember that was the time when you just got started again into the role of, uh, you know, into the routine of working on your diploma. And then you wrote to me again and said, you know what, it's going to have to slow down a bit because I'm moving again, right? Yes, yes. We have to move to other country. Right. And that was I was so happy and sad at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful opportunity. And yes. so that was what brought you to Pennsylvania, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and then I remember at that time, again, because of the move, to a new country, it kind of slowed down your diploma work, but uh, but a lot of good things have happened to you, right? Uh, in terms yeah. of uh, your field of work and stuff coming to Pennsylvania, tell us. Yes, the work yes. that you do now. My Who's job now. Yes, yes. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. we moved here last year, mm -hmm. in the beginning of August, two thousand nineteen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not even a month after our move to Pennsylvania, I got a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's quite fast for me and easy to to find a job. I'm very grateful because my job now is my dream job. Yeah, I'm because cool. yes, I I grow in a family of educators. Like my my parents and my grandfathers are all professors. You were mentioning to me before that you didn't think you could get a job as a teacher, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. I underestimated myself because I am from other country. I'm not from the USA. I'm from Indonesia, small country. And I don't know if I'm, I would be able, you know, to teach Americans, right. kids. And then um, this school is not fully Montessori. I know that. And then, um, you know, of course, there are some challenges such as, you know, teacher's culture. Right. The system, the the teacher's perspective, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. But I believe that whoever with Montessori knowledge will always be different from other educator, mm -hmm. in a positive way. Yeah. So I always remember what you said um, that Montessori is not about the curriculum. It's not only about the materials or methodology. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the way of life that we carry every time with us. So. So yeah. you, you mentioned that this school is not a full Montessori school, right? No, no. So how, how have you, what kind of things have you tried to introduce and what has been the, the reception from the other teachers? Then whenever I talk to the children, I go to their level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then instead of saying, um, like, why would you do that? Or... Why are you crying? Sometimes they are, they become challenging because mm -hmm. because yeah, there must be a reason. I came to them mm -hmm. and I made a like one on one connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that. And then so that's the first law, the way I treat and I I communicate the, with the kids. And the second one, I brought 
practicalized activities in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So with the real material, but child-sized. And guess what, Miss Jenny? When I did um, wet pouring uh -huh. from one jug to two equal containers, the kids are lining up. We're lining up just to have turn mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah, See? yeah. And also um, in culture, mm -hmm. in culture area, I let them learn about the continents mm -hmm. instead of my body, myself. Right. Yeah, I teach them to go, oh, and then I said, Miss Ursula is from Asia. So I flew more than a day, <laughs> yeah, to get here. Yeah. And then, yeah, they're very happy. So mm -hmm. they like, they like the, all the activities that I brought. Yeah. And has this inspired your co-workers? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lately, more teachers came to me and asked me about Montessori. Wow. And also, I got, a lot of recognitions from the owner and okay. from my director because they they realize the classroom is never be the same. It's yeah. not it's not the same. In in the last six months, they changed. Right. Their, their, their behavior changed. Yeah. Yeah. It's yes. really about thinking about the Montessori philosophy of how we approach children. Yes. Yes. And I'm really proud of of how. How I've come yeah, to this. Proud of you too. All of us are now. And I really thank you to Sunshine Teachers Training because I will achieve nothing without oh, STD. Yeah. It's a lot about what's inside you as well. We can help you, but it's a lot about what's inside you. I also know, you know, uh, nowadays we have a lot of moms, uh, even before, you know, the situation right now, we have so many moms who are homeschooling and they practice Montessori at home with their children and that's something you did as well right as yes i do make materials uh to present to your son and uh upon moving to the united states you also did a test and found out that your son is gifted right yes yes, yes. so tell us how has montessori helped you to help your child you know my son must have been grateful that his mom decided to learn about montessori as I'm sure. Yeah, yes, because he found a great pleasure working with Montessori materials. Mm -hmm. So yeah, with with that concept, so from from concrete to abstract and from simple to complex. So um, we we gave him hands on activities, right? Yeah, and then he learned best through that hands on activities. Mm -hmm. um, he found a great pleasure working with Montessori materials, learning based on Montessori curriculum mm -hmm. because Montessori has taught me to understand my son right. as an individual. Right. He is unique and allow him to follow his inner teacher. Mm -hmm. Very important. So, and Yeah, and, and nurture him. Right. So I think Montessori has wonderfully resulted in my child's development. Mm -hmm. When we moved here, his classroom teacher noticed his ability. Okay. Yeah. She was she was a really good teacher, mm -hmm. and then because Sebastian was from Indonesia, mm -hmm. so he is considered an international student, right? Mm -hmm. That is why an ESL teacher came to his classroom, oh, okay. met him, and then tested him and also ob uh, observed him in terms of language, his language ability. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The result was he didn't need any assistance from okay. the ESL teacher mm -hmm. because his his um, language ability is just like third graders, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, you remember we learned about this also in philosophy. Yes. That children also who are gifted, if you don't stimulate them enough. Yes, I remember that. Then that can also lead to deviations. To deviation, yes. And I, I remembered when he was three years old, he went to a, a traditional school in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And then he, he was, I think he was deviated. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure though, but um, I think he, 
got bored in the classroom. Mm-hmm. And then the teacher kept saying that he needs to sit quiet. All, all the students needs to sit quietly. And I remembered uh, the story about butterfly. If you nail the butterfly yes. on a board. Yes. When you said that, I was crying in the classroom mm-hmm. at STT because I remember that. And yeah, I was grateful that I decided to to quit from my job, withdrew him from that school, and then teach him at home. I remember when when Sebastian uh, passed the test and then he, he was classified as mentally gifted and deserved um, a gifted program. Yeah. We had meeting with the principal, the classroom teacher, and then the psychologist, and also the gifted teacher. Mm-hmm. And they they asked me, "What did I do?" Oh, yeah, what did I do? And I said, "I did Montessori at home with him. Wow. I took Montessori diploma in my country, and I did it at home uh, mm-hmm. when he was younger." Mm-hmm. And the, I remember the gifted teacher told me that whatever. I did to him when he was younger, it worked. Wow. It has shaped him yeah. to be himself right now. And I almost cried. I was shaking because I, I didn't I didn't know that what I did to him. Yeah, he's going to have this. I think as mothers, we always want that validation from outside, right? Yes, validation. You know, yeah. You've done the right thing. Yes. And I asked him. Uh, what should I do mm-hmm. uh, in terms of parenting at home? Because right. at school, now he has help. Mm-hmm. But at home, because this is new, I have to learn more than. Um, and he said, just keep doing what I've been doing now. That's amazing. So that That's is amazing. why yeah, it encouraged me to, okay, I want to do Montessori constant, consistently at home to him. You know, uh, if you're talking to all our viewers and our listeners out there, what is one thing you could say to them about Montessori? What is one thing you'd like to share with them? I want to tell them that the Montessori training course offered by Sunshine Teachers Training will not disappoint them at all. Um, When we have to work with children or we have our own children, all of us need a compass that keeps us on the right direction along our journey Mm -hmm. as parents or educators. And Montessori is the best one to guide us through our journey with our beloved children. And then I'm beyond blessed to join this program at Sunshine Teachers Training. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, I've been reborn with new perspective when I... When I learn about Montessori at Sunshine Teachers Training, it's wonderful because because of the trainers, especially Miss Jenny as um as the master trainer. I love the way you you teach us. Like you put love in everything that you say, and then um you are um, the role model as a mother as a trainer so I look up to you and then yeah I encourage all the parents and educators out there learn Montessori because it will give a lot of benefits for for us and then for the children so and we are so glad that you're taking this knowledge you know the goal of what we do really in our heart of hearts we want to impart this knowledge so that Montessori can reach Every child, you know. Yes. And yes, when we course. see our students like yourself doing this, that means that makes us know we are successful. Yeah. Means, you know, as the knowledge should get out there. Yes. So one more thing, you know, we have so many uh, students online like yourself who go through different situations, maybe not as extreme as what you've been through, but you know, to everybody, their own situation is pretty extreme. Uh, can you give them some words of motivation? Because, you know, you really persevered to hold and you received your diploma just a couple of days ago, right? So can you give them some words of motivation so that they keep going as well? Oh, yeah. I know because I experienced I experience it myself that, you know, sometimes it's not easy for, for all of us to be consistent 
you know, there were always ups and downs. And sometimes there is time for us, like we feel like giving up. Mm -hmm. But please, contact your trainer. They will be very happy to to motivate us. (laughs) So don't give up. It's not worth it. Just contact your trainer Mm -hmm. and then keep telling yourself that you can do it. You are stronger than you think. You are smarter than you think. There is nothing that we cannot do. Like yeah. we are parents, we are educators. Yeah, yeah we will do everything yeah. to the children. Yeah. And then um, I really, really appreciate um, all the trainers, even Miss Sony, mm-hmm. Miss Siska, you, the way you support me, the way you encourage me it means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ursula, for giving us your time today. And sharing your story, some parts of it I know are not easy. So we are so appreciative for you, uh, to you for opening your heart to us and to our listeners and to our viewers. And I'm sure all of you viewers will agree that this Ursula story is one of true inspiration. That she has really, you know, tackled all odds to make it to where she is. And she continues to grow. And we can all do that. So thank you very much. Uh, you can follow Ursula on Instagram. Can you tell us your Instagram account? Uh, Ursula Rebecca. Okay, Ursula Rebecca. And uh, you will be inspired because she's constantly posting uh, activities that she does with her son. So you will learn from her as well. And uh, she'll continue to inspire you. Thank you so much. And My pleasure. Thank you. And uh, to all our viewers and followers, we will be back with more interviews, uh, with more inspiring stories, with more information. Thank you for joining us today. Have a brilliant day. Bye.